Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm your host, James Holt. Now, if you're like us here at In-Depth Outdoors, you're looking down the road to greener pastures and better days out there on the water. This shelter in place has been hard on all of us, but we've got some ideas to help you use your time constructively while you're sitting there at home waiting to get out on the water. Now, for walleye anglers, early season is that time of the year when anglers are often the most successful. But we've got a couple ideas for you. Two different techniques filmed last summer from two different bodies of water that we feel if you pay close attention and kind of absorb some of this knowledge, the next time you're out there on the water in the coming year, you're gonna be able to put a lot more fish in the boat. So we've got a uh, bottom bouncer and spinner technique from Leech Lake, Minnesota. And then we're gonna to transition to lead core and crankbaits up on Lake of the Woods. So stick around, I think you're gonna love this two-part show. Got it. Hey. Good fish. Good call, Patrick. <laughs> You almost think that uh, electronic stuff will work, right? Right. I have made no ground on this one. I'm probably going to need your help with the scoop, Pat. Well, just like our fashion, we got no net. <laughs> it's kind of become like a <laughs> tradition for us. I promise everybody, we're not doing it on purpose. Yeah, that's a solid fish. Colorado blade. Colorado blade, number four. Oh yeah, nice fish. Scoop. Got there him. There you go. Chunky. Nicely done. All right. Yeah, that's a solid fish. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, it's going to be a little nerve-wracking if uh, we get a giant. Yeah. Of course, when they're hooked, they're hooked, right? Not going anywhere. Get out of there. Most of the time, if you lose them on the spinner rig, it's usually within the first five seconds. And right. Once you got them, you got them. That's a super nice fish. Leech Lake, known for numbers, and of course, a great size structure out here. And what we're doing is we're pulling spinner rigs today, tipping it with a night crawler. We're just looking for pods of fish on the electronics. And Pat called this one like uh, Babe Ruth called that home run. He's like, you're about to get bit. And he was dead right. See you later, fish. All right. So what we're doing is we're fishing reefs today on Leech Lake. And uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to stir it, stay on transition areas where the rock on top of the reefs transitions out into sand or mud. And what we're finding is small groups of fish. You actually counted that pod. You said there were six, of, yep. six fish in there and uh, we can see the fish on the uh, side imaging and uh, he can actually call the side of the boat that's about to get bit. So uh, we stay on those transition lines, use the electronics to kind of keep an eye out for where the fish are located on the structure and pull spinners through them. Couldn't be any simpler than that. Fish. Oh, there's fish. That one hung himself. Mm-hmm. I love it. Nice. That's the way it's supposed to work, right? Yeah. So one small little thing that we I just ended up changing is my leader length. You know, we got flat calm conditions, high sun, high sky, and every little thing can make a difference in this clear water. And just lengthening out that leader so they don't get line shy just makes that little bit of difference. I believe I owe somebody a hand grab here. <laughs> Another nice quality fish. Leech has got some dandies. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Got a grip? Yep. All right, so far, hand landing is good as netting, right? <laughs> Easier on the fish. Nice chunky fish there. Get Goodbye. It will get a little intense if we've got a 28 plus by the side yeah. of the boat. Might Let's be just a little, hope it's buried. little dicey. So you went out to seven foot? Seven foot, got yep. It. I'm at uh, six foot on mine. fish. Just crushed it. Nice. I think I got him, Pat. <laughs> I was just watching what you're doing there with that fish finder, just how you're hugging the edge of the rocks. 
One of these days we'll remember a net, Pat. There you go. Thank you, sir. There we go. Rear hook right in the roof of the mouth. That fish was going nowhere. All right. Nice fish. What I was saying was, Pat's really got the program dialed. Great eater, if we were keeping fish. That one gets a free pass. See you, dude. So what Pat's really focused on here driving the boat is, you know, on these reefs on leech. There's a very distinct break where, you know, the top of the reef, um, it'll actually come up out of the water on this one that we're fishing here. But it comes down to about 16 foot of water. It's all rock. It's real craggy and it just kind of fades out real quickly to sand. And Pat's using his side imaging so he can kind of see where that edge is wandering. And he's doing his best to just stay right on that edge. And that's where we're catching our fish. If we get up too shallow and we're in the rocks, uh, trust me, uh, it becomes a rock bass slug fest. And we don't want any part of that. <laughs> it's happened a couple times though. <laughs> You don't know their names yet, but you will. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. They say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. On the water, every second counts. So when there's a fish at three o'clock, be right on time with Mega 360 Imaging. Every sweep of our newest technology offers 125 feet of absolute clarity all around your boat. So you can see fish and every detail in every direction. With a clearer picture of what's below, you can catch fish like clockwork. Mega 360 Imaging, only from Humminbird. The general setup that I'm using for pulling bottom bouncers and spinners is always going to be to use the bow mount. Uh, a lot of times we're only going, actually all the time, we're kind of staying in that one to one and three quarters, maybe two miles per hour at the very most when you're pulling bottom bouncers and spinners. And it's really easy to dial that speed in using the Altera and then using the remote. And all I'm doing is just watching my graphs, watching the side imaging, Got my side imaging here, my map here, and I'm just following the contours of these mid-lake reefs and humps, and that's all there is to it. You know, we're going 1.2 today seems to kind of be the magic number, that 1.2 to 1.4. So it's a really basic setup. All you need is a bow mount and then your handheld remote, and it makes it really easy for bolt control putting yourself on these fish. Look at that. I think you might have one there. <laughs> A little bit deeper water there. Mm-hmm, 26. It's definitely been that gold and orange. Yeah, definitely. That has really been the best for us today. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Mm-hmm. Sweet. All right, there's your fish. All right. It's a nice one. Mm-hmm. Got him? Yeah, another nice healthy one. I do not want to count chickens here, or curse us, but <laughs> the lack of a net has cost us nothing today. It hasn't. All the fish that have got off, got off well away from the boat. Another nice Leech Lake walleye. Heck of a Beautiful. Day. There. Good Goodbye. Mate. Good work, man. It's kind of cool when you get to see it all come together. Mm -hmm. you know, get that transition line deal figured out. You kind of get an idea of where the fish are going to be relative to the reef. And then, you know, as long as you're 
able to stay in that general area, you're always on fish. And of course, what Pat's doing is anytime he kind of sees a good defined transition and he'll mark some fish that are just off that edge a little bit, he's dropping waypoints. So now it's just connect the dots. Mm -hmm. One of the best things about pulling spinners, especially if you're just trying, like if you're coming up here for a weekend or a trip, you haven't fished the lake for a week, it's a really good way to cover a lot of water. You know, we're going at about one to one and a half miles an hour. And when you're covering that much water and fishing, you can definitely put patterns together a lot faster than if you're just picking one little spot to go and pitch jigs on or something like that. You really get a good pulse or a good feel for what's going on and where the fish are relating to and what structures they're on. And you know, the other thing too is, you know, we, this is one of those lakes where we like to fish. We just don't get here that often. I don't know Leech Lake very well, you know, compared to a lot of guys. No. It's a pretty good example of being right on the edge there, Pat. Mm -hmm. How far are the fish getting off that transition line? Well, there was a pot of fish right here that we should be going over. What's your depth? Oh, so you got 90 feet side to side? Mm -hmm. So those rocks are probably, what, 30 feet at the most to, yeah, the, to if, the right? if that. There's a fish. All right, Pat, that's right on your waypoints? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you're disarming a landmine. <laughs> Just babying them. I'm killing the motor. This is a big fish, whatever it is. Heck yeah. Can we go back and get the net now? <laughs> Just gonna ease him towards the boat. If this is a walleye, it's a Kong. It's a good one? Yeah. We've had a good day today, quite a bunch of fish. We have not done a good job of keeping the better fish hooked up. Oh, that's a good one. Oh yeah. Nice big leech lake walleye there. Big old tail on him. Well, that's what we've been after all day, fish <laughs> like that. It's about time, right? Mm-hmm. All right, this is going to end it for us here, bud. Never had a chance. <laughs> there you Sweet. Go. Grab your fish. Hold on, let me get this rod buttoned up. Got him? Boy, and there wasn't a lot of, uh, a lot of hook in him, that's for sure. Just that tail hook. Enough, finally. Mm-hmm. Just get that like that. Just like that. Get that out of the way. All right. Well, that's what Leech Lake has to offer there. Caught a ton of fish today. Some nice eaters, some 20 inchers, and got a nice trophy there. It's a dandy. Spinner mm -hmm. tactics, midsummer pattern here on Leech Lake. You know, these, uh, these reefs um, north, so many of them. Guy can come out here, spend an afternoon, never spend more than a half an hour on a reef and never fish mm -hmm. the same one twice. So uh, great destination. Uh, hopefully you picked up a, a lot of tips today. We don't do this a lot. So a lot of it for you and I was like, how, how did we do this in the past? Right. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of trial and error to begin with, but we put it together. Introducing Suffolk's Advanced Fluorocarbon. A new level of suppleness. A new level of toughness. A new level of sensitivity. A new category of fluorocarbon. Hello, future. Available in six technique specific models. The new custom series spinning rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Deadeye Custom Series rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Deadeye Custom Series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Akuma is inspired fishing. Glacial Lake Stock is your number one source for Yeti ice houses. With our large inventory of new and used Yetis, our experienced staff will help you select the perfect model for the way you fish. From sale to service, Glacial Lake Stock has you covered. As an authorized Yeti service center, we can handle all your service or warranty needs and work to keep you fishing all winter long. Stop in today or check us out online at GlacialLakeStock.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever.
The Boat Center is excited to announce the arrival of the Delta Series by StarCraft Boats. The Delta Series is a premium quality fishing boat that offers refined and highly functional storage, exceptional performance, and a lifetime plus six transferable warranty. All Delta Series boats are available with highly reliable Yamaha outboards. To learn more, stop in today or visit us online, theboatcenter.com. And as always, remember to have fun fishing. Glencore Rod's bent over. There you go. There you go. That's at uh, number nine Shad Wrap. One of the big boys. It's not a bad way to start the yeah. morning, huh? So pink has kind of been uh, one of the real hot dominant colors up here. So we've got uh, two deep diving, uh, deep tail dancers off the sides. And we've got a lead core rod with a number nine Shad Wrap pink UV on that as well. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Whoop. That's about as big as a guy wants to lift. Low 20 inch fish. Ate that big shatter up. He liked it, yeah. front hook. And that's on lead core. You had, uh, I think it's 180 foot total out, right? Yep. All right, good start. Here you go, sir. Thank you. Just a nice, healthy fish out here fishing the mud on the Lake of the Woods. Fire him back. Gone. All right, so out here, Lake of the Woods this time of year, it's midsummer, um, you know, August now and the fish are completely scattered out over what's considered or called uh, uh, Big Traverse, Big Traverse Bay. It's just a huge expanse of water that's, you know, 32 to 34, 35 feet deep. It's very soft bottom, and a lot of the big walleyes in Lake of the Woods will congregate out in this basin area. Uh, and what they're doing is they're chasing bait fish, uh, primarily tulabies, that come out here and chase around the bugs that live in the mud. This is a great big fish pattern where if you're looking to catch the biggest fish of your summer, uh, this is the place to do it. Lake of the Woods this summer has just been kicking out huge fish, lots of 31s and 32 inch fish. So that's our goal today. Don't know if we're gonna get there, but the opportunity is certainly there. And my guess is, Marcus, if we're gonna just put numbers of fish in the boat, it'll be on that shad wrap and the deep tail dancers, they'll ring the, uh, the big fish bell. Sounds good to me. Ooh, there's one. Oh, that's a good one. Put on a, uh, a scatter wrap tail dancer in gold and albernus. I have no idea what that actually is, but it's gold. And on Lake of the Woods, that's a pretty darn good color. Marcus, when you get a chance, you want to mash a waypoint for this fish too? On it. So we're running four colors of lead and about a 15 foot leader. Leader's 10 pound mono. Just trying to give a variety of presentations here. We've got uh, you know, two board rods out with those uh, deep tail dancer number 11s. And what we just found was uh, we were dragging some small saugers. So the baits got replaced uh, or put back out there, saugers removed. And while we were doing that, this one just got rocked. And uh, it was pretty savage. Yes. And that fish took all the slack out of that, uh, that you know, the big belly and the, the lead core line on the hit and dropped the rod tip pretty good. Boy, the way that thing was throwing its head around, Marcus, I would have guessed well, see, he's, he's pretty sizable. He's pretty, it's a pretty nice one. fish. Bait is all the way out already. <laughs> that is a nice fish. You know, of course, trolling's all, all about dialing in the uh, the presentation, colors, and you know, lure style. That is a well-fed, very healthy fish. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, twenty-six. Yeah, probably twenty-six. We're gonna get bigger than that yet today. I feel it. All right, we're gonna fire that girl back. Super nice. See you later, fish. Whoa. All right, so this is one of my favorites. This is a scatter wrap tail dancer. You can always spot a scatter wrap because it's got that really unique scooped bill. What that does is the, instead of just running straight in the water column, it really searches and hunts. It can be pretty important if you've got fish that are uh, kind of lethargic. There's a real strong triggering effect to that bait. And the pattern is golden alburnus. I have no idea what that is. I assume it's a bait fish from somewhere in the world. Uh, we don't have them here, but the walleyes love this pattern on Lake of the Woods. All right, let's fire that one back in the water. We got to check your board yet, right? Yes. Hey, there there you go, go, James. 
That's a decent fish. Yeah. I mean, it's not a giant, but solid. Look at that. And I, I don't know if you noticed it, but I dropped that out to 201 feet. Yeah, you just put that one out there a little farther than what we had been running. Well, we got more sun now, so. Nice fish. Yeah, they're pretty 20, up here. 23. I think what we got going on here, it's not a matter of finding fish. We've, we're on the fish, there's tons of them. It's just getting them to eat. There's so much food. You look at the fish finders, you know, 2D and side imaging, you see these huge balls of bait, lots of bugs down there, a lot of food. We'll figure it out, we'll get this yeah. dialed in. What do you think? Um, we've got that one board rod out there that hasn't caught anything. Should we put a gold L burnish out on that? I think so. I'll dig one up. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. beneath can no longer hide. New Mega Imaging Plus uses high-frequency sonar to show you fish and structure up to 200 feet below your boat and 200 feet out to either side. No more secrets, no more guesswork, just a clearer picture of the world below, down to a fish's species and direction. Because more detail means more of this. Only from Humminbird. That's a better fish. There you go. Golden Alberts. <laughs> We've been wanting to get up here all summer long. The bite's been so good. So many big fish. Got to the point where just kind of getting sick of buddies sending us pictures and Snapchats of giant walleyes. We had to come up here. Ended up timing a bit of a cold front. High today is going to be uh, 71 degrees. But if the fish are going to bite and it's cooler like this, it's a lot more comfortable. The rod we're using here, it's a uh, uh, Okuma Deadeye Custom Telescoping Trolling Rod. Real soft, works great with the lead core. Just fishing an Okuma low profile here. Holds about seven colors of lead, which is more than we need up here. Marcus has got him! Yeah! Get that net out of there. That's a long fish. Gave me the business on the fight end. That gold Alvernus, man, that has been the ticket today. I'd say it's probably a 26 inch fish. Fought a lot harder than that. I thought it was gonna be that 28, 29. Not that I'm complaining. That's what Lake of the Woods midsummer's all about. Big walleyes in the basin. See you later, fish. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the one, Marcus. That is a heavy fish there. All the action, or most of it today, has been on the lead core rods. We've been, uh, you know, pretty diligent about keeping at least one of those big tail dancers out there, the number 11s, out there looking for a big fish, and finally had a board just go ripping back. Should be a good fish. It's a big bait. Yes! <laughs> good work, sir. Oh, that's a big girl. Well, as promised, Marcus, that tail dancer, that's where you're gonna get your big fish of the day. That is a dandy. Nice job. Felt about twice that big in these waves. <laughs> All right, we're gonna fire that girl back. What a fish. See you later, big girl. Woo. I tell you what, that fish, 
hard fighter to begin with. You throw in these surging waves, <laughs> going straight downwind like this. I thought she was going to be 12 pounds. Well, you can't help it when you're in this stuff. I mean, you got to take your time and bring it in easy. So we've had most of our fish today on the scatter wrap tail dancer. So similar body shape to this one. This is the 11. That scatter wrap has the nine centimeter body. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger, dives a little bit uh, deeper. It's got a bigger bill and a completely different action to it. This is the big fish bait out here on Lake of the Woods. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's put some smaller fish in the boat today, but for the most part, it's just been riding out there on the board, minding its own business until that fish dunked that board. So uh, definitely worth the while to keep one of these out at all times. And that was 150 foot back on 10 pound mono. 2.2 mile an hour. I love the sound of that clicker when it's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> We're trolling about uh, two to two, two miles an hour. Everything's about 33, 34 foot out here. And we're running about four and a half colors of Suffolk Advanced Lead Core. About a 10, 15 foot leader. Yep. That's 10 pound fluorocarbon down to those Golden Alburnus scatter wrap tail dancers. Thank you, sir. That is a well-filled out fish. Imagine that at 32. <laughs> Obviously a very rare fish, but a lot of these in the lake. There are. All right, see you bye. You know, one of the things that I love about Lake of the Woods is, you know, there's a lot of deep, clear bodies of water that are real good walleye fisheries early and late in the season, and they get really tough midsummer. Lake of the Woods is pretty much good bookends, start to finish. And uh, midsummer is actually when it's really at its peak. I mean, we're, we basically caught a cold front and the bite's good. I know it's even been better. Yes. And once it warms back up again, it'll be on fire. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Now, uh, midsummer often is referred to the dog days of summer by many walleye fishermen, but trust me, if you can really get your head wrapped around these two techniques we shared in today's show, that those dog days of summer can turn into some of your favorite months to fish. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.